Game two of the preseason has come to a close for the Toronto Raptors and the Houston Rockets. I guess it's their game three, but it's our game two. However, the Raptors lose this one, 118-111 to the Houston Rockets. And um, this game, again, there's a lot of things you can take from a game like this. There's a lot of positives you can take from a game like this, and we'll get to them in a second here. Uh, but in the end, it was a late third quarter drought for the Toronto Raptors, uh, leading to a comeback from the Houston Rockets, and they put it away in the fourth quarter. Um, like I said, as the Raptors lose 118-111. One, uh, Look, the Raptors were minus 14 in the second half. That's just not good enough. You're not going to win many games that way. Um, but, or no, sorry, minus 14. They were minus... 15, excuse me, in that in that second half. And they just didn't play well defensively. And you know what? Um, you look. It's not about giving up less points each game because they gave up 129, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, in the previous game, 129, and they gave up 118 today. So that you look at that and you're like, well, they played a better ball game. Yeah, yeah they, they did. I wouldn't say it was as bad defensively, but again, a lot of easy buckets for the Houston Rockets. A lot of James Harden floaters that were not contested. Um, a lot of non-contested threes. A lot of, you know, and, and very specifically, because I saw it quite a few times in this game, a lot of lobs to Clint Capella that nobody was really biting on, which I'm not sure why, because that's what happens with him. Um, it, it, it doesn't really understand. I don't really understand why nobody was getting to that. But I mean, again, it's preseason. It doesn't really mean a lot. And a lot. Another thing that I saw that was a real big issue was every time Harden and Westbrook were driving to the lane, and the Raptors collapsed to 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 meet them there. They were kicking to wide open guys on the perimeter, and then when they were knocking shots down, there was a problem. The Raptors were minus six in the three-point category. However, they shot almost 30 less shots than the Rockets from beyond the arc. They shot 64 shots from three. They made 17. The Raptors were 11 of 37. So technically, percentage-wise, Raptors were better. But again, it, it, they made six more threes. Um, you, do, you guys can do the math all you want. It's 27 points difference, right? That's, that's a big difference in, 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 in point differential from the three-point line. Now, with, with the negatives... Coming the positives, there are, there are quite a few positives that I want to take from a game like this. Pascal Siakam looked great once again. He was 16 points, 7 boards, 4 assists, shot 6 of 11, 2 of 4 from the free throw line. Not the greatest there, but 2 of 5 from 3. He had 2 steals in the game was plus, plus 7 while he was on the floor. Um, with Pascal, he's he's just continuing to grow. I mean, you've seen it through the first couple preseason games now. He is getting better and better with each and every game. And I'm loving what we're seeing from Pascal. Now, we want to see this in a regular season contest. And October the 22nd is when um, when that kicks off. But what we're seeing from Pascal is you're just seeing the all-around game start to come out. I, I, I love what we're seeing. You saw a steal lead to a, lead to a dunk from Pascal. You saw a couple uh, a couple lobs from Fred Van Vliet. I, mean, I thought it was really, really solid game for Pascal. Uh, OG had a really rough night, though. Oh, a two, or I guess morning. Uh, two points, two boards on one of five shooting. He was 0 of 2 for 3. However, he had three steals in the ball game. So I, I like what I saw defensively from OG, but again offensively struggled mightily in the game today. Uh, Serge Ibaka only played 18 minutes, but he was very productive in those 18 minutes. 12 points, 8 boards, and a dime. 5 of 9 shooting, 2 of 2 from the line. He was 0 of 1 from 3, but he had a block in the game. And I think that was on James Harden, if I'm not mistaken, that one block. And uh, the the two guys that I thought had really good ball games. Now, Fred Van Vliet didn't shoot the, game, shoot the ball well. He shot 2 of 7. But again, with Fred Van Vliet being a point guard... You're not looking for your point guard to score 20, 25 points a game. That's just not what you look for. I mean, Russell Westbrook's a freak in nature, and he never shoots 50%, but he, he gets you gets you 25 points a night. That's just the way he works. But Fred Van Vliet did a great job today. Only shot 2 of 7, 1 of 4 from the fr from 3. He was 5 of 6 from the line. He had a couple steals in the ball game. He had 10 points, 10 assists. He had a double-double in the game today. So you know what? As much as Fred Van Vliet didn't, um, didn't score that well, uh, he fa he facilitated very well, and he got the open looks, and he did a great job feeding his players, making shots. And he was a plus seven on the floor. And the guy, my MVP for the Toronto Raptors from this game, Norman Powell. I thought he was spectacular. We talked, you know, we talked about it in the preseason preview video. We talked about it in last in the first preseason game video. We need to see Norman Powell take that next step, and. I think at least in the first two contests, we're starting to see that. Now, it is preseason. It doesn't mean anything towards the regular season and playoffs. But to see him in an NBA game 
in the starting unit against the big club in, you know, James Harden, Clint Capella, Eric Gordon, Russell Westbrook, all these big name players, BJ Tucker even. And he, and in 22 minutes today, he had 22 points, three boards, and an assist, seven of 11 shooting, three three from the line, five of seven from three. And he had a steal in the ball game. He was a plus seven when he was on the floor. So look right there, people. You can look right there and see how the Raptors did. Their starting unit, they were great. Other than Abaka and OG, who were minus six and minus two. OG was minus six, uh, minus six and, and Serge was a minus two. But again, Serge only played 18 minutes. So OG played 20. Your three guys, your three, your three guys who played 22 minutes, all right? Siakam, Freddie, and, and Norman Powell, they were all... Plus seven. They were great while they were on the floor. You know, and then the bench didn't have a great time. I didn't think they were really good in this one. They they, they dominated the last game, but they weren't so good today. And let's go to that bench. Marcus Gasol came off the bench. Good to see him out there. Only played 18 minutes, though. Six boards, six point six boards, uh, an assist on one of four shooting. He was 0-2 from three. He had three steals and a block. That's what Marcus Gasol is going to give you. He's going to give you that great defense and sprinkle in some offense. But again, it's for his first preseason game. I know he played in the uh, in FIBA or it was no, it wasn't FIBA. Uh, it was the it was the the tournament that they had earlier in the in the summer. So yeah, he's technically not rusty, but it's his first preseason game with this team. So I mean. Yeah, he had a rough start, but that's okay. Patrick McCaw, he shot the ball not the greatest either. Combined, you know, Gasol and McCaw, they only shot one of or two of nine. McCaw shot, uh, had four, uh, seven points, four boards on one of five shooting, 0 of two from three, but he was five of six from the free throw line. Um, he had a steal in the ball game at, in 17 minutes. Again, not the greatest game for Patrick McCaw. Malcolm Miller had eight points in uh, in 17 minutes, two of four shooting, two of four from three. Had a couple steals, so I thought Malcolm Miller played a pretty good ball game there offensively. My boy, Terrence Davis, I thought he was pretty good. Seven points, four board, uh, sorry, seven points, five rebounds, and an assist, three of eight shooting. Uh, 0 of 1 from the free throw line, but he was 1 of 2 from 3 in 14 minutes. Good job, my boy, my boy Terrence Davis. And he was a minus 2 while he was on the floor. And Matt Thomas, he had a tough time shooting the ball. 1 of 5 from the field. 0 of 2 from 3. 4 points, a couple boards. Dewan Hernandez, the uh, second round pick of the Toronto Raptors this past year, uh, had 6 points. Where is he here? 6 points, 2 boards on 2 of 4 shooting. 2 of 2 from the line in 12 minutes. So I thought he was pretty good. Again, very short time. Minus Emily was on the floor, though. Chris Boucher, six points, three boards. And again, down the line, there really wasn't a whole lot. Stanley Johnson, 0 of 3 from the field, uh, 1.3 boards. Not a very good job there. So we're still looking for that small forward position for somebody to take hold. OG hasn't been very good so far. And Stanley Johnson really hasn't been good so far. So it's going to be really interesting to see kind of who takes that shot and who takes the reins kind of moving forward for the Toronto Raptors at that position. Because that's the one question mark. I think Norman Powell, you know... We knew he was going to be that starter. We didn't know how he was going to be, but we kind of had the feeling that's what that was going to be his position. You know the point guard position. You know the power forward position with with Abaka and probably going to be Chris Boucher. You know Marcus Gasol is going to be there with Dewan Hernandez. That's probably going to be the one two uh, those two positions. And then the small forward position, you look at it and you say, well, OG and probably Stanley Johnson, but nobody's kind of taking that shot. Nobody's kind of taking that next step that you want them to do. So who's gonna get the spot? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who it's gonna be. I think OG might have the the inside scoop because he's been with this team for so long. And Stanley Johnson, the two preseason games he's been in, has not done very good. So it's gonna be interesting to see kind of how it goes moving forward. There's two preseason games left. The Raptors travel back from Tokyo, Japan, to to um to finish off the preseason. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this uh, team kind of looks. Uh, come the second, um, second the, the the last two games of the preseason. I mean, you look at it right. Their last two games are on Sunday at six o'clock against the Chicago Bulls at Scotia Bank Arena. I think it is, unless they're playing somewhere else. No, they are playing at Scotia Bank Arena there on Sunday, and then on holy smoke, they don't play till the next Friday uh, in Brooklyn. It's a seven thirty tip off, and then they open up the season on October the twenty second. All right, so like we said, um, there's two preseason games left for the Raptors. Twelve days until the season gets going, and there's only two preseason games left. So, guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. I know you guys enjoyed watching Raptor basketball the last 
uh, last two preseason games in Tokyo. I'm, I'm hoping you guys didn't want to have to, or not I'm hoping, but I'm, I assume you guys didn't want to have to wake up early for those games. The good news is you won't have to anymore because the next two preseason games are at home and in Brooklyn at 7 and 7.30. So it's going to be really nice to see some basketball prime time. It's going to be fun to see, but we want to get this season underway and I don't know if Kyle Lowry is going to be back for those preseason games at home I think he will be because I heard he wasn't making the trip or he wasn't going to play in any of the games in Tokyo Japan which he didn't so uh it's going to be interesting to see what um what this team looks like there uh, at Scotiabank Arena there this upcoming Sunday against the Chicago Bulls for game three of the preseason. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the first half of the ball game, all right, I want to say the first, the first half and then the first about... 10 minutes of the game against the Rockets there this morning. The first third of the 10 minutes of the third quarter. Smack that like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your guys' thoughts on this game, your thoughts on the video, your thoughts on who you th who you liked for the rappers in the game. I mean, I'm, uh, my guy is Norman Powell. I thought he was spectacular. Yeah, Siakam is Siakam, and he's going to go out and do his thing night in, night out. But to see what Norman Powell did, didn't miss a shot, basically. He was 7 of 11 from 3. That's incredible. Um, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on what Norman Powell looked like today. What do you think of Siakam? What do you think of Fred Van Vliet? Also, the whole small forward position, OG Ananobi, um, Stanley Johnson. What do you think is going to happen with that spot? Do you think somebody else is going to kind of go right in there and, and take that spot from somebody? I don't know. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on what you think is going to be happening with this team moving forward and the, the good things you take from this ball game, the bad things you take from this game, all right? And uh, Twitter is down below for myself. Guys, follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys Leafs edition tonight as the Leafs welcome in the Tampa Bay Lightning to Scotiabank Arena. All right, as the Leafs look to end their mini two-game losing streak and get back into the win column against a very good divisional opponent. All right, so we want to see this team get back into the groove, get back into the swing of things in the winning ways. And um, you want to see a good start from Frederick Anderson. I mean, that's the thing you want to see today. You want to see that happen um, for the Leafs. I mean, look, they got to be able to put the puck in the net. And Vasilevsky historically has had good numbers against the Leafs, so it's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out tonight at Scotia. Bank Arena. As for the Toronto Raptors, guys, like we said, their next game is on Sunday evening, 6 o'clock tip-off there at Scotiabank Arena. The Raptors will be back in town. And uh, what's the starting lineup going to look like? I don't know. Is Kyle Lowry going to be back? We're going to have to wait and see how it plays out over the next few days. But it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Talk to you guys then.